Welcome to the PVC 2020 NBA Draft Remote Film Room. Joining us today is all CAA guard and one of the more exciting mid-major prospects in this year's draft class, College of Charleston's Grant Riller. What's going on, Grant? Nothing much. Chilling at the house. Appreciate you guys for having me on. Yeah, of course, man. Uh, glad to have you, and you know, congratulations on a great career. And uh, you know, I understand that it's you know kind of unfortunate circumstances for this to be the particular year that uh, you're coming out and you know going through the draft process, and it's tough with all the uncertainty. But I think your tape speaks for itself, and people are starting to realize uh, the value that you can add at the next level. And somebody who's been particularly on top of uh, your tape and has been a believer in your translatability to the NBA for a while now is uh, one of our scouts here at the PBC and also an analyst at the Stepien, Zach Milner, uh, who will be joining us today to uh, run through some of your game film. What's up, Zach? How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. Of course. So without further ado, guys, let's uh, get this game film up and running and uh, we can talk through some of the, you know, strengths that you bring to the table that translate cleanly to the NBA, to minor areas to potentially brush up and improve on. And ultimately, like how we see your role uh, mm -hmm. in the NBA and the value that you can add. Definitely. Yeah. Ready. All, all right. right. So first of all, you're one of the most talented offensive players in this class, and you can score in a variety of ways, the true three-level scorer. Your combination of an amazing first step, good burst, and the ability to change pace lets, allows you to get to your spots on the floor, and you can rise over some of your defenders for impressive dunks as well. So we're going to get into this first clip now. Here you show like a little a swing back and forth but before you take that first step to attack. You seem to do this like little swing before um, you attack on a, dec a decent amount of times. When you get the ball, what are you thinking or like looking for that leads to like a little swing to get their uh, by your, get by your defender? Yeah, uh, well, this is a move I use uh, a lot of the time, uh, especially on a on a live dribble like that. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to give them a little hesitation, and and this move has counters to it. But uh, if I can beat you right off the rip, um, then then I'm gonna do that. But uh, if you happen to play it right, then I got counters. So basically just a setup move to try to feel how my defender is guarding me. Gotcha. And when you uh, when you say you've got counters to it, I'm sure we'll get to some of those in some of these next clips here. But, you know, you want to maybe just speak to what, you know, what might be a couple of the primary counters, like depending on how a guy might be guarding you. Yep. So if I catch over here, I can hit him with the same shimmy. Um, but instead of taking all my momentum to the right. Uh, after the shimmy, I could cross it back to the left uh, if he's playing my right hand too hard. Um, but sometimes they guard it pretty well, cut me off, and then I kind of get stuck. But it's still one of the moves I use a lot and it's very effective that not a lot of people do too much. Yeah, it's a great go-to. And it seems like, you know, even if they know you might want to use that first step to beat them right and get to the paint, seems like you have that quickness and that burst to beat them even if they know it's coming. Yes, sir. All right, on to this next clip here. You're matched up against Delaware. This one, I, I think maybe you can kind of run us through what your reads are on this play, but it seems like at least right now it's crowded over on this side. It's going to clear out. You want to maybe speak to, like, you know, your patience in these kind of situations mm -hmm. and kind of reading both where the offense and defense are to determine your angle of attack. Uh, yeah, well, on this play, uh, I was holding the ball for, for longer than I would want to on any possession. But uh, me and my teammate kind of got missed up, um, had a miscommunication, uh, kind of a ball screen. He was thinking, yeah. I was thinking more ISO. Um, so after we got it cleared up, I was able to make a move. But at the same time, I felt like I was holding the ball too long and kind of let the defense get time to set up. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think that, you know, like you're saying, maybe – you were holding the ball long, but I think in this situation, maybe it warranted it and yeah. is sort of maybe the best thing you could have done and kind of being patient in here in this setting was a blessing. And you may have missed the shot here, but I mean, if you pause it right here, just 
look how explosive and like how horizontal you get on this to get past this guy and then put up a nice little floater. I think that, you know, that explosiveness and then ability to, you know, put up nice touch on your runner mm -hmm. and whatnot is going to be really crucial to you at the next level. And it's good to see that you have that in your bag right now. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, and also, yeah. also your first step is probably the best in this class. I've never seen – I don't see anyone else beat their defender off a single step that many times. You just get by your defender one step, and you have – either you get to the basket, you get a forwarder, or you get a pull-up as mid-range shot is knocked out, knock that down. Is that something, Grant, that uh, – that you particularly work on a lot at practice or in the off season. It seems like your first step is like Zach was saying, one of your biggest assets. Is that mm -hmm. something that you've sort of always been comfortable with or something that you've kind of repped out a lot and just gotten better and better at? Oh, I think a lot of it is uh, I given. Uh, so fortunately I was blessed with that, but um, at the same time, I, I've done a lot of agility in the past uh, with, with, with our strength coach at, at CFC. Um, we've done different lateral movements. So uh, he's kind of enhanced uh, my God-given talent. So, um, yeah, I got to give some some love to him and then also to God for blessing me with that with that ability. Yeah, it, I feel like it's always some sort of combination of some natural ability and putting in that work. And you can definitely see the benefits of that in your game. So let's move on to this next one here. Zach will run you through against James Madison here. So here's another one where you use your first step again. You give a little hesitation before you go through, and then you just show your crazy athleticism just rising up for the dunk. Have you uh, sort of noticed maybe, you know, over your career becoming a little bit more explosive of a vertical athlete too to go along with that first step? And, uh, you know, do you think that, you know, as you make this transition to the NBA that you're going to be able to continue to improve that and finish over maybe a little bit uh, better rim protection at the next level? Uh, yeah, I think this is uh, part of my game uh, that's that's kind of underrated right now. Yeah. Coming out of high school, I was, I was a, a leaper. Um, believe it or not, I jumped a lot higher than I kind of do now. But huh. um, my injury – uh, kind of made me focus on a lot of different aspects of my game. So um, throughout yeah. my career, I kind of didn't get as many opportunities to show my athleticism at the rim as far as dunking and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I definitely feel like that's a part of my game that uh, that is slept on right now. And, and I definitely feel like I'll surprise a lot of people with, with my athleticism. Yeah. And maybe that was a blessing in disguise that you had that injury and it forced you into working on some mm -hmm. of these ancillary aspects of your game. That's and now right. when this kind of starts coming back and you're, you know, a full time professional and can really focus on a lot of this weight training and strength training and keep growing in that area. Maybe that comes back and you're just even that more well-rounded of a player. Yes, sir. Definitely. All right. Next one here is against Auburn. So you're out on the wing and I mean, let's just bring that back a little bit. This, this rip move to create your space here is just really nice and gets you, you know, you're coming down, winding down toward the end of the half here. And this is a crucial bucket here for some momentum going into halftime. You want to maybe speak through like your ability to, you know, kind of rip through on the wing and then fluid, fluidly get into your pull up three pointer. Yeah, so I kind of want to see how he's guarding me. Uh, coach called up the ISO, so I know it's just me and him right now. Um, so he kind of pressed me a little bit. I uh, had his arm on me, kind of hand checking me. So I know if I rip low, uh, it either forces him to back up or I'll have the step on him. So um, I was able to rip low, and I know his momentum since he was so far up. Uh, he's yeah. probably expecting me to go to the basket. So right. I just out for a one dribble pull up, and, and fortunately, it went in. Yeah. So is that so it's a combo of like knowing that he's off balance and like seeing how much these guys are helping on you because they yeah. know you like to get to the rim. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because I can see it when I when I caught the ball. Um, pretty much everybody's in the box kind of waiting on me. So, yeah. And, and on top of that, the way he's guarding me, I know I can get to my pull up. So I thought that would be the best uh, shot in that situation. Yeah. Definitely agree. I think that was a good read and you can see you get a lot of elevation on this and he has no chance of even impacting your uh, look there with a closeout or anything. So really nicely done. And I think at the NBA level, 
you're going to benefit from having uh, more spacing as well, right? Like mm -hmm. on this play, your driving angles are cut off. You make the right read and pull up. But like in the NBA, it's going to be a little more widely spaced out. They're not going to be able to like slough off help side and like key in on you as much. And I think that'll open up the game even more for you as you uh, begin your pro career. All right, next clip here. Zach's going to take this one. So here you just got a nice little situation at, at the top. You have a guy on you and it's defending you. And it's just a pretty simple, simple play you have. You just see the clip keep on rolling. You pretty much just get to your spot. He still sort of goes with you. You just ride, you just rise over the top of him and get your shot off. Um, you get some good elevation on your shots. And watching a lot of your shots off the dribble, I see there's some times where you just you'll adjust to how you're getting defended. Like sometimes if they're closer to you, you'll lean back a little, but you still have great balance and still get your shot off and still make it. Um, do you work on trying to take off balance shots at times and just on this specific play, like what are you thinking when he's, when he's um, with you, when you're driving? Uh, yeah, well, I work on that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm into the unorthodox kind of shots, uh, unorthodox kind of finishes. Uh, so it kind of really depends on my defender. Um, I know he's kind of a smaller defender. So uh, if I can get to my spot, uh, I can kind of rise up over the top. So um, I was able to get to my spot and, Kind of like the last clip, his momentum will probably think I'm going to the basket, uh, just stop hard for the pull up and shoot over the top. Right. Yeah, and I think it's also great recognition by you here that this mm -hmm. big is probably coming up to cut off yeah. your drive, right? And you have the wherewithal to stop on a dime, both send your defender flying past you and then avoid this big trying to cut you off. Just really nice read and really nicely done there. And, and like the last clip, you got some good elevation on your shots also. So it's tough to contest your shots. One more here, just, a, you know, really quick again, just little half rip, like one dribble step back here. Have you, I guess, been working on your step back as well? Because that's going to be a good way for you to, you know, continue to be able to create space off the dribble. And this one, I just was impressed with the speed and the guy still gets a high hand on you and you're able to get the shot off. Yeah, well, that makes a, a effective move these days. Um, and, I, and I watch a lot of Damian Lillard, so I kind of yeah. started this move from him. But uh, shot clock's winding down, I'm coming off a little curl screen. Uh, he happened to be on my left side. Um, so it was easy to just take one hard pound dribble and try to fade to the baseline to, to create as much space as I can. Yeah, you do you do that sidestep a lot. You you just feel them on your hip and you just see the opening to the side. It's pretty mm -hmm. easy to get your shot off that way. You, like you said, you just create a lot of space. And I've seen that in a lot of your games. You work on that shot a lot, I bet. And it's just an effective shot. Definitely. And then on this next one, I think you just you see the defender on you just sagging off a little. You show a little bit of a sidestep here at the top of the key for three. It's hard for like you're such a great attacker. You can score the mid range. You can score from three. So it's tough to defend you if they're too far up on you. You're gonna go by them. If they're sagging, you can just do this sidestep and get a little three. And then if they're on you, you can just do whatever you want with your handles and change of pace and acceleration. So mm -hmm. I mean, it shows how talented you are of an offensive player, and okay. you can have this this three off the dribble. Is this another one of those instances where, like, you know, to Zach's point, you have a wide array of ways that you attack the defense. Is this another one where you notice that all these guys are really kind of sagging in and helping and ingesting up the paint? And did you kind of see that layout and then decide that the step back is probably your best uh, option at that point? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I started a clip. Um, I was near half court. Um, so I knew naturally um, the defense probably thought I would try to get downhill. Um, I seen that everybody was was in good position, uh, and I kind of had all eyes on me, uh, and I just felt comfortable taking that shot at that time, and it went in. Yeah, it's good recognition in that situation and just, you know, another impressive little sidestep pull up there. First comment on this clip here. I don't know what's up with your guys' uniforms in this one. It looks like, uh, <laughs> you look like the Hoosiers or something in this one. Kind of <laughs> interesting get up. Yeah, that's shout out to our old team back in the 70s. <laughs> but nonetheless, you still beat your guy baseline on this one. 
really nice hesitation there. And then I think it's particularly impressive that you take off from outside the paint here and then kind of are able to contort your body and get past the big and finish uh, in the middle there. Uh, do you work a lot on, I guess, you know, obviously the hesitations, uh, again, a combo of your natural ability and uh, repping it out, but um, do you work a lot on these sort of contorted finishes and like adjusting in midair and finishing at the rim? Uh, like Zach alluded to earlier, you're, you've been one of the consistently best finishers in college basketball at the rim throughout your career, even including big men, right? Like you're a guard, but you're finishing at the rim as well as a lot of bigs are. And a lot of it is, it seems to be from being able to like adjust in midair and finish like this. Uh, you want to maybe speak to that? Yeah, well, the unorthodox kind of finishes. So uh, yeah. I'm sure I practice that stuff. And at the same time, uh, in college, a lot of guys would, would try to draw charges on me. Right. Um, and they definitely got that on me early on. But as my career kind of uh, progressed, I knew I kind of had to come up with different situations to beat charges. And uh, this in this situation, I didn't really have my footing down to, to Euro step or anything. So right. I just thought if I could take off right here and kind of jump to the side to maybe avoid the charge and that would be good. Um, luckily, he didn't try to attempt to charge. But at the same time, I, I was able to get to the front of the rim and finish. Yeah, just really nice adjustment in midair and something that we consistently see throughout your game. Mm -hmm. You do a nice job with that. Uh, and Zach will run you through one more here with the ugly uniforms as well. <laughs> <laughs> this, this next one is it's just another finish. Um, like like John said, and I said earlier, you're just you're consistently one of the best finishers in college, and you can see your touch around the basket on your floaters, even on your shot. You have this guy backpedaling a little, hit him with a little double move and get to the basket. Do you do you see him like once you're approaching this? Do you see him backpedaling and know you can pretty much give any move or two that you want, or what do you see when you see this when you're attacking him? Yeah, well, uh, it's a minute. It's about a minute 30 in the game left, uh, and we're trailing. So we're trying to get something quick. Um, and I know if I come down and push um, and try to make something happen early, then uh, that's the best scenario for us. So I came down, um, just tried to hit him with a with a double move because um, he's, he's been doing a good job of, of cutting me off that game. So um, I tried to hit him with, with a double move this time, and it worked. Uh, I had my man in the corner for a three, which would probably be more ideal, but um, I was trying to get some quick, so. Understand. Yeah. And really nice, uh, like, kind of goofy foot finish here, too, right? You jump off your right foot, finish with the right hand, and are able to avoid the charge and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, twist yourself around him there. Just really nice take. And then this, this next one, it's a very improved part of your game over the last year or two. This is your passing now. Um I think you're, you're always a fine passer, but I think these last two years, you've really mm -hmm. improved some more advanced reads. Um, and then you just take advantage of your scoring gravity. As you can see here, as you're attacking the basket, you just have all these defenders that drop in trying to stop you to get to the basket. Easy cross-court pass to the opposite corner. You get a wide open three for your team. So how, how have you been able to improve your passing over the last year or two um, relative to where you were three, three years ago? Uh, a lot of film. Um, and then at the same time, uh, a lot more reps. Uh, I think early on in my career, um, I could do this kind of stuff, um, but I didn't get as much opportunity. And at the same time, I, I wasn't as polished at it. But um, I definitely made a, a point of emphasis this year of coming back to definitely try to showcase that part of my game. Um, and, and I had the personnel around me to do that. Uh, and coach put the ball in my hands a lot. So um, a lot of the time, the reads were on me and uh, I just tried to make something happen. Right. And, and and there's so many other clips where you can see your scoring gravity because of how good of a shot maker you are. So as, all you have to do is, I mean, once you're scoring, all the defenders are going to be trying to help off of their man to help on you because it's tough to defend you one on one. So even just that is going to open up just easy passes to the perimeter to get wide open threes as well. Definitely. Yeah, great drive and kick. Uh, draw all the defenders in there really nicely done again. Uh, now I think we are moving to one more pull up here. So Zach, you want to maybe touch on, uh, on this one as well? Yeah, there was a couple of clips. Like, like I just said, like your passing's improved. There's, there's a time here and there, like this isn't a bad shot on this one, but you have your big popping. Yeah, for sure, right yeah. there. He's a, he's a pretty good shooter as well. Definitely. So I think he shot like 40% of the year. You have, I mean, this is look, you have a pretty good look at the basket there, but he has a wide open three right there. Just sometimes. Um, I mean, like you said, more reps you'll get, you'll, you'll see that.
but that could just be a nice pass for an open three. And I think the next clip as well, it's pretty much the same exact situation. You have your big popping and we'll go to that one, but just as something to, to work on and um, get three points instead of two as well sometimes. Yeah, I think this is where watching the film comes in too. Um, me being able to see these um, missed opportunities, I think is big uh, and definitely something that, that helps me improve throughout the season and throughout my career. So uh, definitely missed, missed them on, on these two plays and it was good to see it so I, I can make sure I correct those. Right. And, and you also do it a decent amount. Like you like that on the pick and roll or pick and pop. You have that behind the mm -hmm. back bounce pass where you're passing to your pop man a lot also. So it's not like you don't see that. There's just yeah. a few times where you can clean mm -hmm. it up. Still. So I, I think before we, before we go into uh, the, the defense, I mean, there's still so much more about your offense that's good. We just don't have all the clips for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have that much time. But there's stuff like how you attack bigs out of the pick and roll and either your spot up shooting. I know when you're attacking bigs out of the pick and roll, you, you like to give them a little in and out to get to the basket because you have them backpedaling whether in drop coverage or not. Um, and then your spot up shooting over your four years, you are a 40.9% spot up shooter, uh, which is very impressive, even though you've been playing on the ball a lot recently. So is, is there anything more to your game or even in your pick and roll game that you, you want to talk about or you think that should be known more? Uh, well, I think you guys pretty much covered it, but um, yeah, I think the way that they kind of guard the pick and roll in the NBA kind of suits me. Um, in college, it's, it's easy to trap a lot and kind of make the point guard give it up. But in the NBA, they kind of guard it a little different because of the athleticism and, and personnel that the defense has. But uh, I'm looking forward to going against that coverage and going against those kind of guys and just getting better at it. For sure. So um, I think this is still... Oh yeah, here we're in the isolation defense. Um, so yeah, here's a clip where you're just you're locked in defensively, quick feet, disciplined. You don't let him get any um, space on you. You don't fall for the pump fake. You just make him force up a bad shot. When you're locked in, you're you can be a really good defender with your physical tools, your athleticism. It's, it's pretty tough to score on you when you're locked in. It's just as you can see here. Um, mm -hmm. What what do you what is your like what are you anticipating on this play? What do you think that he's doing, and how do you know? stop him there uh well the shot clock's running down so i know it's, it's probably going to be a one-on-one -on -one situation with me and him um so i know i kind of got to buckle down um but i kind of just want to force a tough two or a tough three um i was able to cut him off on on, the, on his first drive so that kind of made the rest of the possession easier um and then i just tried to contest at the end and make it as tough as i could without fouling yeah really good situational awareness like you were saying low shot clock and you know, in the NBA, like, you know, forcing a guy into taking a long two over the long run is going to be, you know, the most efficient for your defense. Right. And, you know, really good containment here. And like, that's a shot that you live with, you know, anytime. Right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next, we've got a clip uh, against UCF here. Again, just a really nice job here of you containing. And then this time you end up, uh, you know, having the quick hands as well after you kind of bump them off the spot, force a middle, and then, you know, rip through and are able to cleanly get that steal there. Um, was there anything in particular, like, you know, relating to the scouting report here, like your, you know, first couple minutes of the game here, are you anticipating kind of what he's going to do? Or is this more of like a read and react situation? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, driving, I'm guarding a driver in this situation. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and this low shot clock again, so he's got to make yeah. it. Um, but I kind of swiped down and took a gamble on it, and, and I was able to get all ball. Um, more ideal, I could have contested and just made sure it was safe. But at the same time, I feel like I got quick hands and, and good reflexes, so I felt like he showed me the ball a little bit, and I tried to get it. Yeah, and you do a decent amount of jo a, a decent job on cutting off defenders or cutting off your man when you're defending them. Like you'll beat them to the spot because of your quick feet. And you force them to go the other way. And like right here, there's good hand-eye coordination, quick hands, quick reflexes, and able to get that steal. And then this clip right here is one of my favorite clips of the year, actually. Um, versus Oklahoma State, if you pause it right here, you're pretty much covering two guys on the opposite side. What are, you, what, what are you looking for here? How do you know which one you want to go to? Are you just reading reading him driving, or what are you looking for here? Um, well, I'm trying to play both, but um... – I know I can kind of play with him a little bit. So if I show him, I, I'm expecting him to throw it to to the guy on the wing. 
uh, more than likely he's going to try to throw it back to the corner man. So I'm kind of just baiting him a little bit, um, and, and it worked. Um, my arm is long enough to where I can get there, so I don't have to bite too hard on on trying to get him. But uh, yeah, it worked. Yeah, just a really, really nice read, good off ball awareness. And like you were saying, it seems like you really do bait him by like slightly jumping over this way, making him think that you're cutting this one off. And then when he thinks that the corner is going to be open, jumping back and reacting to that, just, you know, great off ball defense, great reactions, and then find your guy in the open court, mm -hmm. able to push it down there and get an easy finish for your teammate. So that wraps up the game film portion here, Grant. That was really fun. Uh, Zach, appreciate you cutting up that film and, you know, enjoyed chopping it up with both of you and talking through all of that and, you know, how your game translates to the next level. Uh, Zach, thank you again for joining. Appreciate all your insight. Thanks for having uh, me. So, Grant, before we sign off here, uh, just wanted to uh, kick it over to you in light of the uncertainty surrounding this pre-draft process. Mm -hmm wanted to give you a platform now to kind of, you know, express yourself to teams and uh, give them an idea of who you are. So who is Grant Riller? And if a team is to bring you into their organization, what can they expect from you both on and off the court? Yeah, well, uh, uh, that's uh, 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 I feel like you're getting a guard that, that puts pressure on the defense, um, whether it's in transition or in pick and roll, a uh, guard that, that's a three-level scorer. Um, and, and one that can play the one and the two comfortably, a uh, true combo. Um, and, and while doing all that, um, still making the same the same reads, uh, all the right basketball plays. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what they're getting on the floor. Um, and off the floor, they're, they're getting a hard worker, um, a, a genuine guy that's uh, nothing about positive energy. Um, regardless of the situation, I kind of want to be a guy that, that, that has the light shine. Um, on the rest of the team and, and brings that positive energy. So uh, I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, I don't know what it holds. Um, nobody does, but it's kind of an even playing field right now. And I'm looking forward to the future and wherever I end up. I think that's a great attitude to have. And I think that, you know, as you, you know, start interviewing virtually with front offices and they, you know, see the kind of person you are and they have the time to catch up on some film and really dig through some of the, stuff that we just went through together, you know, a team's going to fall in love with what you bring to the table. And I think yeah. you're going to be able to add a lot of value at the next level. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you guys for letting me come on and, and cover me and just let me share the platform with you guys. Of course, that was a good time and uh, best of luck going forward into the pre-draft process and stay safe, Grant. Yes, sir. Thank you.